Hello, Serge here from the Backyard Driving Range. All right, we have a question that came in to customer service from Lee Bikeman. And Lee says, I love your swing and teaching methods. Yours is the only swing that I have successfully used to get the ball in the air and play more consistently. About a year ago, I was fitted by Doc for a driver. That's Doc Griffin. In fact, I went and saw Doc yesterday and he's uh, reshafting a whole, a whole backup set of clubs for DJ. Because uh, you always, when you're out on tour or you travel a lot, you better, especially as a tour player, you better have a set of backup clubs. Because that if they get lost, they got to be ready, ready to be shipped right out in case you don't, you don't, uh, they don't find them before the tournament starts. And uh, so we're always having that backup, and Lee's going to do that. In fact, we're trying out a new, we're, we're testing out a new shaft, but it'll be built to the exact specs that DJ needs in terms of of the frequency, the the MOI, the the load, and the kick points, and everything else. And so uh, I dropped it off to him, and and he's getting ready to reshaft me, and I'll hopefully. Uh, Doc Griffin's going to England uh, in a few in uh, next week and uh, uh, sometime in the future, whenever I think it is, in the uh, near future, and and uh, he'll be over there for 10 or 11 days or whatever. And uh, so I don't know if we'll get the DJs in my clubs before then, but I'll come back and uh, probably even do a video with him and give you a re uh, update on what he did with my clubs and 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 how they're working for him. But basically, what we're doing is surge is 63. I think if you look at if you look at these dailies every day and see the swing that opens up the daily and then looks at the one with me on the mat here, if you really look at the the opening one, that that video was shot <clears throat> probably five or six years ago, well way before my my open heart surgery where I had my bypass, and and you can see just focusing on that that swing is probably at least five to eight miles an hour faster than I'm swinging now. <coughs> Excuse me, and I'm basically using the same shafts. So Doc says I need to, I need to get my, my shafts getting weaker and lighter. And so uh, hopefully we're gonna see, I'll get, I'll get a good part of my distance back when I get the right shafts back in the clubs. Okay, so about a year ago I was fitted by Doc for a driver. Although I hit it okay, I noticed that even though it is 12 degrees, I have trouble getting any height on the ball. I listened to your comment on not wearing bifocals. And although I did not get single vision lenses, by looking through the bottom of the lenses at, the, at a blurry ball through my bifocals, I am able to lift my head, thus correcting the top of my spine angle, and that corrected my tendency to, to hit slices, but I still cannot get the height I feel I should be getting. Do you have any suggestions? Thanks and keep up the great work. By the way, I took your one-day seminar last year in Alpharetta, and it was extremely helpful. I would recommend it to all PPGS students. Okay, Lee. I hate to disagree, but you're doing it wrong. You cannot play with bifocals. I just want to tell this story really quick. I had a guy that used to be about a three handicap in Dallas last year, okay? And, excuse me, Phoenix. And he was the last guy. We had about, Dave and I were there. He was like, the, we had eight or 10 that day. Probably at least eight because we're using max out four to one ratio. And he was the last guy. And I got to him and, and, in, the, and in the conversations with him, he's, he's been as low as a three handicap. He had a really good swing. But man, he was standing up to the ball and so close and everything's in his way. And he said, I've gone to the point where I got trouble even getting the ball in the air. I could hit it over there. I could hit it over there. I could chunk it, top it. He said, it's so bad. I'm like, I'm like a 15 handicap now. I said, wow. And he had these little, you know how the, how the new look is, all these little skinny little glasses on. He's wearing a, he's wearing a pair of those little skinny glasses. The ones that just barely the size of your eye socket. See what I wear? I'm wearing big ones. I don't want I don't want any lenses, any 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 frames in my way. All right? I want to see all right through my glasses. I don't wear bifocals. I don't need them. Trifocals and the worst ones are those progressives. We have no line. Okay? So he's so I, I start looking at him and, and he's standing there and I'm seeing his head roll down like this. So finally I, I I start asking him some questions and come and find out he's got bifocals on. I said, no can do, can't play with bifocals. Absolutely, positively, especially progressives that don't have a line. Because now you don't even have a definitive spot as to where your head has to be to be above for the distance and below for the, for the, for the close vision. So he says, well, I got driving glasses in the car. Those should work. I said, yeah, that sounds a lot better. So he, gun, he runs back to the parking lot, gets his cubs, and his glasses come back. Now I can get his head up. I can get him in the proper position, posture, gets a nice lift to his arm. Boom, just nothing. Back to a three handicap just like that. So we get done, we do all our other stuff after we get done assessing everybody, the, next, the first talk's always alignment. We get done, we go in, we're having lunch now because we're going to go out in the afternoon. And uh, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, Dave's over there look, it's sitting with each guy one by one doing their, doing their uh, we videotaped them and he's going over their video showing their before and after swings. 
and what he's going to work on and we he hits the button on his on his iPad and it, it just sends the, the, that video to the to the, to the to the student he's doing that and the rest of us are over there talking about this or that or whatever all of a sudden this guy just blurts out he says Serge I just figured it out I said okay what'd you figure out he said I just figured it out remember I told you I, I've been playing bad like this for six months he said I said yeah he said that's when I got those glasses six months ago hello okay so I'm going to go for the heavyweight, all right? I'm going to walk in kind of close so you can all see this. Again, there's nobody behind that camera. But you see this book? This is, this is a book. A very good friend of mine who wrote this book. It's called The Pro's Edge Vision Training for Golf. Improve Your Putting Long and Short Game, written by Dr. Lawrence D. Lampert. He's down in Boca Raton or somewhere down here in Florida. I've already done some studies with him, some talkers with him. I've had DJ go and see him specifically to get a lot of things checked out. He's done some, I've never been in his office, but he's done outside checks on me. We've talked a long time. We've been on the green once or twice, and I will eventually shoot a video of him when we get the time when he and I can get together. He is, he is considered a, a leading expert in the world in, 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 in vision for athletes, all right? He has been on Olympic, I believe he's been on Olympic committees uh, and, and worked at Olympics. And, and he, uh, when the transitions was running the tournament in Tampa, he was there, he was there, he was their optometrist on site to, to, in their tent that they had over there for people to come in and get checked. In his book, The Pro's Edge, which will be your edge if you do this, on page 106, which is somewhere around chapter 11, I believe, excuse me, chapter 9. It's titled Glasses, Contacts, Bifocals, and Golf. All right? And that starts on 101, and now I'm on 106. The first paragraph in that page, prescribing is an art as well as a science. Second paragraph, all lenses are not the same. Third paragraph, bifocals with golf. I'm going to quote this because it's written in the book. I, that's Dr. Lawrence Lambert, not I the swing surgeon, because I the swing surgeon recommended, because I've known, I've known this before I even talked to Dr. Lambert, but I like him because of, you read his bio in here, it's impressive. And you notice I keep this here in my, and it's, this never leaves my car, right? When I needed to, when I decided, saw this question, I went right down to my car, which is parked about five feet from that camera right now. This is in, this is in the little carrier thing on the uh, behind my driver's seat it's sitting in there we like put maps and stuff it's, this is always in my car because normally if I'm out teaching my car is with me if I'm not on the road by getting there by plane bifocals with golf I suggest to most golfers that they do not wear bifocals the bifocal or progressive in parentheses portion of the lens is set to focus at about 16 inches and blurs the ball at a dress position if the bifocal has a line, it also gets in the way and causes shifts in head posture to look around it, under it or over it. I added that. Under or over it, I just added. Most players should get a pair of glasses without a bifocal for golf. But if you need them, have your eye, eye care professional design one or two different things. He shows pictures of getting it down here in the corners, on the outside. Maybe even on the inside will help. I had one golfer... Like big glasses, he had bifocal right across the middle. And I got on him, his name was Gary. I got on Gary for like five or six years when I was at Harbortown. And I just say, Gary, your head's always down, your arm's getting away, it pulls you off the ball, because your, your arms hits your chin, because your chin's down so much, you look over the top, blah, blah, blah. I was on him for six years. One day he finally walked up to me, he goes like this. I said, yeah, so what, Gary? I still see the line right in the middle. He said, yeah, but I went to my optometrist and he flipped them. My reading's at the top and my distance is at the bottom. I shook his hand, I said, all right. Became a new golfer there. Just like this other gentleman at Phoenix I told you about became a new golfer. So what is happening to you, Lee, is that, yeah, you're looking out the bottom, but just remember, what did you say here? I listened to your comments and all wearing bike folks, and although I did not get single lens and visions, vision lenses, by looking through the bottom of the lens at a blurry ball. If it's blurry, it is not focused. You don't have a clear focus. Dr. Armstrong once said one of the, the most important things in good posture is the tripod effect. And you know what he called the tripod effect? Both legs in the proper position and the vision from the eye to the ball was the third, was the third leg of the tripod. That's what, that is what's on the videos of the first, when I videotaped the first ever Peak Performance Golf Teacher Certification Program in Charlotte about four years ago. 
that I've done since I've been in this program here. And, and Dr. Armstrong was, was a guest, and I asked him to come, and he came and did about a, two or three hours with me. That whole thing was like, like 17 hours, 16 hours, but with questions afterwards, we, know, we, were there, we were there at least an hour or two more every day with all the guys asking questions, including especially after Dr. Armstrong taught. The tripod effect. Two legs, and the third leg is your eyes. You don't have a third leg. You're playing two-legged. You're, you're, you're listening. You're playing with a two-legged tripod right now, Lee, because your ball is blurry. That ball, your eyes got to be able to focus on that and see that ball like you can see the, you can see every dimple in there and, and, and almost read the name if your eyes can see that far. If you're blurry, you got no, you got no good depth perception. And even if you stay really, really quiet. It's still gonna not. Have, it's still not gonna be anywhere near the consistency and the levelness and the consistency that you can get in hitting the ball much more consistently solid. You got to. You got to do it, Lee. If you don't want to believe me, be, believe Dr. Lambert. He's one of the best. That, the, uh, the best experts. Lawrence D. Lambert. Look him up. Just Google his name and start reading about him. He makes his living doing this. He's got stories in his book that'll tell you how he fixed up pros. Some pros, they could stand here and look at a ball on a putting green there, come back and look right back and the ball's not there. Their eyes are jumping around. There's a lot of issues that can happen. And that's why whenever I, my optometrist, I've never gone to an optometrist. In fact, most of all my doctors, except, except now I, didn't, I don't push this thing when I have my heart issues and my internists anymore. But I've always only go to doctors that play golf. Because if I go in and I want to ask them about, hey, I'm working over here, this is happening, I'm feeling this and that, and especially with my eyes, my chiropractor is a three to one to three handicap. My my optometrist, Dr. Ken Yeager in Greenville, South Carolina, is if he got to play more, he'd be he'd be a solid three. And some of my theories about the eyes that I figured out about some situations, I ran by him, and and I actually taught him, got him thinking about a few things, and changed his mind about something. I only go to people that, in in, in many cases, in my medical issues, that that play golf. So I, when I ask questions, they they're not going, huh? What's that mean? All right. Go look up Dr. Lawrence Lambert. Eventually he and I are going to be doing some more things because this is critical. Now I can hit a ball with my eyes closed because I have quiet knees. But I'll tell you what, I, I certainly wouldn't go out and try, to, and try to qualify or play in a golf tournament with my eyes closed even though I've never whiffed once and I never practiced that. But I certainly hit a lot better when I got my, my three-legged tripod, which means I see the ball very well. Folks, I don't know what you want to do. If you want me, somebody write a letter. I'll get on my knees. I'll pull my hands up and I'll pray. I'll beg you. Just like good alignment. I beg you. At the end of the alignment video, I said, do the checkups to make sure you're, you're corrected. If you hit a good shot to a wrong place, to see that, that you, didn't, you, didn't hit, you didn't push it or block it or pull it, you hit it right where you were aimed. I'll get on my knees and I'll beg you. If you're playing bifocals, trifocals, and especially the ones with, with no lines, get rid of them. Put the, if you have to, put the vision on the, 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 the reading on the top and at the bottom. But you can't play. Looking at a blurry ball is no way to play golf. You, have, you just do not have good focus, and if you don't have good focus on the ball, you're not going to hit as consistently solid, which is what we always say when I close every video. Hit it more solid, straight, to shoot those lower scores. So please, Lee, quit kidding yourself. Take an old pair of lenses. Just go get, go get your distance vision, because as Dr. Lambert said right here, 16 inches is what the bifocal is generated for. So you're, after 16 inches, which is probably no more than that far from your face, right here, which is not even halfway to the ball. Think about it. You've got to see that ball crystal clear. It's got to be a big white ball sitting right there for you to hit it consistently. So please, Lee, go get it done and everybody else. I, I'll get on my knees and, 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 and beg you if you want me to, okay? But I'll do it standing up right now. Please. Can't play with bifocals, trifocals, and especially the progressives with no lines. If you're doing it, and you're hitting the ball everywhere, the only way to hit it solid is pure vision. Like Dr. Armstrong says, we play with a three-legged tripod. The third leg is vision to the ball. That's it for the search for today, and I'll be talking with you all again soon.